Hello, my name is Graham Tideman. I'm a consultant in obstetrics with a special interest in fetal medicine. I have a particular interest in fetal heart anatomy, which is why I made this model. This is a plastic model which will allow you to relate the three-dimensional anatomy to the scan planes. For example, the four-chamber view, why it looks like it does, and how it relates to the aortic outflow view. And in this talk, we're going to go through these sections one by one, relating to how the images appear on the screen to their three-dimensional anatomy. So just a brief recap on the fetal circulation. Obviously, uh, oxygenated blood works its way back from the placenta through the umbilical vein. It enters the fetal abdomen and, as we can see, uh, then goes through to the through to the liver and about 20% of it hives off into the liver. So the liver gets the very best quality oxygenated blood, about 20% going through to the liver into the portal circulation. The remaining 80% goes through the ductus venosus and this is the really clever bit. The ductus venosus is a narrowing. So the blood speeds up as it goes through the ductus venosus. As you can see the ductus venosus on this illustration is not terribly well shown as it's a little further away from the heart than it is in reality. But the ductus venosus causes the blood to speed up and then shoot into the right atrium. Imagine as if you were watching a river and it went over some rapids. The water goes much faster when it gets uh, a smaller area to go through. So the oxygenated blood shoots through the ductus venosus and then is shot into the right atrium. When it enters the right atrium, the best quality blood, the most oxygenated blood, is fired at the foramen ovale. Therefore, the oxygenated, the best blood goes through the foramen ovale into the left atrium. From there, of course, it goes down through the mitral valve into the left ventricle. From the mitral valve in the left ventricle, it comes out the aortic arch. And here's the clever bit. The aortic arch then supplies the head and neck vessels with the best quality blood, which come off before the ductus arteriosus joins the descending aorta. Some of the blood in the right atrium obviously peels off the side of this jet stream running through the right atrium and goes down through the tricuspid valve and out through the pulmonary artery. Most of it goes then into the ductus arteriosus and then joins the descending aorta at this point. This is where it's joining the best quality blood that has left through the left ventricle. So a mixture of pretty good quality blood and very good quality blood then carries on down through the descending aorta to supply the viscera. This blood then carries on right down supplying all the organs of the body and it comes off the body at pretty much the last possible point before needing to go back to the placenta. So the, almost the last branch of the internal iliac artery then supplies the two iliac arteries which then run through what in you and I becomes the superior vesicle artery to leave the baby back at the umbilicus and go to the placenta to pick up more blood. When scanning fetal heart, even if you're doing it as part of a normal screening scan in a low risk population, I'd strongly suggest you use the, the cardiac settings on the machine. It's only a quick flick of a couple of buttons in most machines and it makes your life easier. It makes your life easier partly because the machine is already set up for getting the best 2D cardiac, but I think equally importantly, when you come on to do colour imaging of the fetal heart, the colour settings are already set up for the fetal heart, which saves an added level of fiddling when you get to a bit that you're interested in. When you're scanning the fetal heart, just think about how little you have to move the scan probe to get the views required. The fetal heart at 19 weeks is less than 2 centimetres long from below the four-chamber view to above the aortic arches. The heart also, as illustrated in this sketch, might easily be 10 centimetres away from the probe. So a total movement of 10 degrees will cover all five views. As such, a movement of only about 2 degrees will go from the orientation to the four-chamber and two degrees more from the fore chamber to the aortic outflow. So when it comes to holding the probe, it makes sense, first of all, to steady your arm on the patient. 
The other thing that you have to get to know and love in fetal heart scanning is artifact. Artifact you have to use to your advantage and is easily illustrated in the two examples that are going to follow. The four chamber view as shown the interventricular septum looks really thick and chunky and this here is another picture of the same fetal heart taken on the same day uh, where the four chamber view shows the interventricular septum looking really thin and of course this is just because the scan beams have got nothing to bounce off. So for example a view when you get a really good view of the aortic outflow will also be a view when you get a really good view of the right branch of the pulmonary but a good view of the ductus arteriosus will probably mean you've got a lousy view of the aortic outflow and right branch. So know and love artifact and use it to your advantage. The first thing with orientation is to be sure that you're orientated on that patient. Clearly this goes for all scanning but particularly for fetal heart scanning don't use anatomical structures such as the left ventricle or the stomach to rely on because the first time you come across a baby with everything reversed you'll get confused. And I, people use different techniques. The one I happen to favour is when I first scan I go up and down the baby to orientate myself and I have a mental image in my mind of the fetus in cross section and then I determine are the feet into the screen or is the head into the screen. Having orientated yourself on the foetus, you then start from below the diaphragm and work your way up into the chest. Just below the diaphragm you'll note the stomach on the left, the umbilical vein, the IVC, the inferior vena cava, and the descending aorta in cross section. Having come up from the diaphragm, you then enter the chest and the first view is the four chamber view. The four chamber view can be much more tricky to get than the outflows or the arches, so it's worth spending a bit of time just recapping why the structures appear as they are. In this image here, the left ventricle is on the left of the screen and therefore, as I have it in my mind's eye, the baby's head is out towards us and its feet is inside the screen. The features of the four chamber view are firstly, most importantly, get a complete rib and then long before you look into the actual anatomy of the heart, remember to check other structures. Remember to check the lung fields, so there's no CCAM or diaphragmatic hernia. Check size and orientation. The tip of the apex of the heart should be pretty much just in front of the left rib. Check that the heart is beating normally, check contractility, check there's no pericardial effusion. Moving on to the four chamber view itself, there's the right ventricle, the left ventricle, the right atrium, the left atrium, and these should be roughly similar size. The interventricular septum and the top bit of the interventricular septum called the membranous septum is often, particularly when looking down the length of the interventricular septum, quite thin and can sometimes be confused for VSD. Crucially, moving up the interventricular septum, the tricuspid valve comes off the interventricular septum closer to the apex than the mitral valve. This means the top of the interventricular septum runs into the atrioventricular septum. This structure here separates the right atrium from the left ventricle and is therefore the atrioventricular septum. And the way to check this is to be sure that the medial cusp of the tricuspid valve comes off the interventricular septum closer to the apex than the medial cusp of the mitral valve. Coming up the atrioventricular septum, there's the base of the interatrial septum. This tiny little piece of interatrial septum is the further confirmation that the crux of the heart is normal. Moving up the atrial septum, then you see the foramen ovale, and usually the top portion of the interatrial septum is quite difficult to see. Coming on to look at how these structures relate to the model, first of all, each slice, if this was a real fetal heart, would be a mirror image above and below the slice. 
the way I've made the model is to show a range of normal depending on artifact and position. So as you can see, this is the four chamber view as would be seen with the scan beams appearing more or less perpendicular to the fetal heart. And when you open it up and look at the other side of the slice, this is how it would appear with the scan beams running down the length of the interventricular septum and showing it as a much thinner structure. And this point is illustrated for each slice. The aortic slice, outflow slices, are slightly different to each other, as are the pulmonary and as are the arches. When you look at these features on the model, uh, in the image you can see the um, baby is lying with its spine with its back down and towards the right so its left side is downwards its right side is slightly upwards and the um, feet are in the screen with the head out towards us just to illustrate again the same points the right and left ventricles the right and left atria the interventricular septum the atrioventricular septum that arises as a result of the tricuspid valve and the mitral valve having offset positions. This is the base of the interatrial septum here and the moderator band which often can be seen filling the base of the right ventricle. Moving on to the other slice, if you open up the model, you'll see that the position shown, the baby's back is still down and on the right of the screen, but this time the head is into the screen and the feet are out towards us, so the left is here and the right side of the fetus is here. As a result, the scan beams are looking more or less down the length of the interventricular septum, which is why it looks thin as it does in this case. The outflow tracts are easy. All they are are two tubes coming out of each ventricle. There's the aorta comes out of the left ventricle and the pulmonary comes out of the right ventricle. And once you get them into your mind, you'll find them easier to scan than the four chamber view. I'm now going to illustrate this with a rather crude, but I've found the effective way of just demonstrating how simple the outflow tracts and ductal and aortic arches are. A brief recap, left ventricle, right ventricle, moderator band, tricuspid, medial valve inserts more apically than the medial cusp of the mitral valve, atrioventricular septum, base of interatrial septum, foramen ovale, and this represents the little flicker, the little flicker of the septum secundum you see as a result of right to left flow through the foramen ovale. So the aortic arch arises just above the atrioventricular septum, as we'll demonstrate here. So the aorta is a tube that comes out of the left ventricle just above the atrioventricular septum. It comes out horizontally at first across the chest towards the right side of the chest, turns the corner and then starts to go down, having given off the head and neck vessels and ends up going down the descending aorta down here. The pulmonary outflow comes off the right ventricle and as we demonstrated, 
runs more or less straight back towards the descending aorta down here. As it does so, it gives off the right branch of pulmonary round there, and it, which curls its way round the ascending aorta, and the left branch of pulmonary comes off here into the left lung field. So you end up with aorta going up, over and down, pulmonary coming more or less straight back, right branch branching round the ascending aorta, left branch going off into the left lung field, then both heading up, going down to the same place down here where the descending aorta goes. When you move up from the four chamber view, again remember it's only just a tiny movement of the probe, a couple of degrees, you sneak up from the aortic outflow and then you kind of find the reason, if you like, for the atrioventricular septum. The aortic outflow appears just above the atrioventricular septum. When the baby's in this position, you'll get a pretty good view of the aortic outflow because it's running perpendicular, more or less, from left to right across the chest. So, obviously, you think of the aorta as a left ventricular structure, but it rapidly goes from the left side of the baby across to the right side of the baby. And when the baby's in this position, or when you're scanning with the baby in this position, you'll see the aorta pretty clearly as a long structure because there's something for the scan beams to bounce off. Aortic valve running into the aortic outflow. When you move up the aorta, you'll see that it very rapidly, as we saw in the early illustration, it very rapidly turns the corner and starts to come up towards the fetal head. Therefore, what was a structure looking like a tube now becomes a circular structure as it becomes cut in cross-section. So in this case, we can see that the spine is down on the bottom left of the screen, which means that the baby's head is into the screen. The left side of the baby is on the right side of the image, the right side of the baby is on the left side of the image, and the aorta in the centre here can be seen having turned the corner and start to go up towards the head. In this view, there are effectively five chambers, which is why it sometimes gets called the five chamber view. You see the right ventricle, the left ventricle, the right atrium, the left atrium, and the aorta. Moving up from the aortic outflow, as you've, once you've seen the aorta go into cross-section and become circular, heading up towards the baby's head, just a fractional movement and you'll see the pulmonary valve and pulmonary outflow running into the ductal arch. And it's very difficult to talk about and show the pulmonary outflow without also seeing the ductal arch because they're in the same transverse scan plane. The difficulty that you'll have with demonstrating the ductal outflow, having seen the aortic outflow, is that the kind of position that you'll get a good aortic outflow will be a kind of position where you won't get a very good view of the pulmonary outflow because they run more or less perpendicular to each other. Looking at the image here with the model, the baby spine is on the right of the screen, the left side of the baby is down and the right side of the baby is up, so the baby's head's out towards us with the feet into the screen. And in this view, you'll get really good views of the pulmonary outflow. The right coming down the pulmonary outflow, when it's more or less alongside the, the ascending aorta, the right branch comes off. But in this view, it'll be heading up towards us and won't be well shown. The left branch tends to disappear down into the lung and head slightly more inferiorly, and so it's slightly more difficult to see. 
As soon as the branches come off, this is the ductus arteriosus heading down towards the descending aorta. If you pick up this slice and just look at the relationship of the aortic and pulmonary valves, you can see just how close they are to each other. The aorta running more or less horizontally across the chest towards the right side, the pulmonary outflow running more or less straight from front to back, and running in straight into the ductus arteriosus. pulmonary valve running into pulmonary outflow and then on into the ductus arteriosus. Ascending aorta. Superior vena cava. When the baby's lying on its back like this, the aortic outflow will be easy to see, but the pulmonary outflow and the duct will be difficult because they're running in the same direction as the scan beams. However, this will allow the right branch of the pulmonary to be seen much more clearly. So you need to move your probe around the patient to orientate onto the baby to try and demonstrate the right branch. And in this situation, it shows up very clearly, partly because it's perpendicular and partly because it's on the other side of the ascending aorta, which means there's a, ch a rapid change in densities which allow for the walls of the right branch to look quite marked and obvious on the scan. In fact, sometimes it can look almost as bright and as large as the aorta in this view. Pulmonary valve. Ductus arteriosus, right branch of pulmonary. Again, moving a fraction up towards the baby's head, you then start to see the aortic arch. In the previous section, we saw the ductal arch run straight back into the descending aorta. Moving fractionally up, you still see the, the ductal arch, but as you come above the point where the right branch branches off, you then start to see the aortic arch come over the top of the right branch and head to exactly the same place that the ductal arch is. In other words, heading down into the descending aorta. Alongside the aortic arch, which is of course now on the right side of the baby, you see the superior vena cava. In the view shown, the baby's lying on its back with the left side on the left, the right side on the right, so the head is out towards us and the feet are into the screen. In this view, it would be quite tricky to see the arches using 2D imaging because they're both running away from us. But you can see the ductal arch here, the aortic arch which has come over the top of the right branch, with the right branch appearing out here, and the superior vena cava here. Pulmonary outflow running into ductal arch. Aortic arch. In this view, the ductal and aortic arches can be quite difficult to see because they're both running away from the probe. By putting the colour on, they could show up quite clearly, and you'll notice that the flow is in the same direction 
In other words, they both show up as blue in this clip. When the baby's in this position, the arches will be more or less perpendicular to the scan probe, so there's something for the beams to bounce off. Coming on to the last slice of the model, it again shows the arches in their relationship to the superior vena cava. In the illustration shown, the spine is on the bottom right of the screen, but in this situation, the left side of the baby is slightly towards the probe, so the head of the baby is into the screen with the feet out towards us. This means that the ductal arch, which you can see here, is on the left side of the baby, the aortic arch here, and the superior vena cava here. There now follows a clip demonstrating all the views in sequence. Starting below the diaphragm and entering the chest to see the four chamber view. The aorta is seen crossing from left to right, the pulmonary valve the right branch of pulmonary, and finally the aortic arch joining the descending aorta. There now follows a few video clips of abnormal hearts.